Imagine living in a place you thought was forever, but what if it's not? We're talking about the iconic states of Washington and Oregon, rich in history, 130 and 160 years in the making, respectively. Recent news has sent shockwaves along the U.S. West Coast, sparking anxiety and questions about their very existence. Social media lit up a few years back with posts that were straight out of an apocalyptic movie, leaving many wondering, what's really going on? You've probably heard of people rushing to safety, but not because of a natural disaster alert or a warning from authorities. We're talking about the time when folks started packing their bags over social media rumors without any official warning. But what sparked this sudden mass exodus? The reason behind all the panic might just surprise you. A scientific study that made headlines in a journal article. According to predictions, Washington and Oregon are on high alert for a massive earthquake that could shake the ground with a mind-boggling magnitude of 9.5 or more. The terrifying thought is not only about devastating tremors, but also what comes next, colossal tsunamis crashing the shores and volcanic eruptions erupting in a fury. So, how did scientists even come up with this catastrophic prediction? The answer lies in some pretty cool tech, they used special research buoys out in the Pacific Ocean to collect data. Now, these buoys aren't your typical floating devices, they're super sophisticated tools that measure changes in ocean levels. What they found was a significant drop in water levels along the west coast and guess what? History tells us that such occurrences often precede massive earthquakes. This information somehow ended up on Superstation 95, calm and before you knew it. The internet was buzzing with alarmist posts. People were genuinely believing an earthquake of epic proportions was just around the corner. But here's a twist later on. John Wydale from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network stepped in to put everyone's minds at ease by debunking any claims about signs of an imminent earthquake. But before we all breathe that collective sigh of relief, John Wydale dropped some extra intel. It turned out the ocean level drop was just a glitch from a single device that wasn't working properly. Nothing else dramatic happened in their records, so no need to sound the alarm just yet. Now, here's something important. While it's true this area is super earthquake prone, Wydale assured us these massive quakes probably aren't just around the corner. Scientists are always keeping an eye out for signs of a strong one, but they're also aware that predicting the exact timing can be tough. One thing though, they won't deny it when I say, get ready for some serious geological scoop. Right now, beneath Oregon and Washington states, there's a real deal threat brewing. It's all about the tectonic plate called Juan de Fuca. Now, you might be wondering where this name comes from. Well, let me break it down for you way back in the day, the Farallon Plate was huge, but over millions of years, its center got swallowed up by the massive North American Plate and split into three parts. One of them is our star, Juan de Fuca, named after an explorer who actually mapped these waters centuries ago. The epic journey of Juan de Fuca Plate started a whopping 180 million years ago, when Pangaea, Earth's supercontinent, began breaking apart. As it sunk beneath North America's northwest edge, the stage was set for an incredible display of geological forces. Here's what you need to know our planet's surface is like one giant puzzle, made up of tectonic plates that move at a snail's pace, constantly shaping our landscape. Sometimes these plates collide, and when oceanic plates meet land or other oceanic plates, they can create areas known as subduction zones, where the lower plate gets pushed down, down, down into Earth's depths. Now that we've set the stage for our geological journey, let's dive into why subduction zones are super important. They're where most of Earth's active volcanoes and powerful earthquakes happen. Scientists think the sinking of the Juan de Fuca plate helped create the high lava plains volcanic zone in southern Oregon. To visualize this process, grab your hands like you're about to give someone a high five, palms facing down and fingers lightly touching. Your right hand is now North America's tectonic plate, while your left represents the John de Fuca plate ball. Get ready to see how these two plates interact. The point where your hands meet is our subduction zone, the spot where tectonic magic happens. Now that we've set up the scene, let's bring Juan de Fuca under North America by sliding your left hand gently beneath your right. This movement mimics how the Juan de Fuca plate slowly sinks beneath its neighbor. Watch closely as you naturally lift your right hand. 
just like the Earth's crust is being pushed upward to form new land and volcanoes in this incredible process. But here's the difference. North America is like a steady rock star, refusing to budge beneath Juan de Fuca. Now, let's see what happens when we add some geological pressure. Keep your hands in place and simply rotate the joints of your right hand upwards. Think of it as the ocean pushing against the continental plate, forcing its edge to rise, creating more land. This buildup of stress over thousands of years was too much for the system. It led to a massive earthquake with a devastating impact, striking around 1,700 with a whopping magnitude of between 8.7 and 9.2. The effects were felt far beyond the quake itself. A monstrous tsunami ravaged coastal villages near the Columbia River, leaving an indelible mark on history. But here's the thing, nature has been pretty chill since then, with dreamers mostly staying below magnitude 6. Yet, scientists weren't buying it. They sensed something more ominous was brewing beneath the surface. They proposed a mind-blowing idea, what if a massive hole or rift had actually formed in Juan de Fuca's plate? Now, you might wonder, how could they be so sure of this theory when there seemed to be no evidence to back it up? So, let's dive into what really happened. A team from the University of California took on an epic task, analyzing over 200 earthquakes between 11 and 14. Here's their secret weapon. They examined how seismic waves behaved at different temperatures and rock types. This helped them map out where the colder, denser ocean plates were lurking beneath the surface. But then, something strange popped up in those data. A blank spot under central Oregon on the plate, which basically suggested a giant missing chunk. And if you thought that was bad, just wait, uh, things got even more intense when they ran a full tomography scan and took a closer look at the entire plate. Now we're seeing the full picture emerge. As it turns out, the gap under central Oregon is actually part of a massive fault line. And I'm not just talking about any ordinary fault line. This behemoth stretches an incredible 600 miles from Vancouver Island in Canada, all the way down to California's Cape Mendocino. And here's the really cool, or should I say, really intense. Part. This fault lies right over a weak spot where two sections of the Juan de Fuca plate are overlapping. What's even crazier is that its lower edge has sunk deep into our planet's mantle, and researchers think it might just be signaling the end of life for this particular plate. Get ready for some geological fireworks. Once this fault line fully breaks, it's going to unzippers its way across the plate, splitting it neatly in two. But that's not all. Each half will then shatter further into tiny fragments, and these shards are likely to latch onto other tectonic plates out there. It's a fate that awaits every single one of our planet's tectonic plates eventually. But here's where things get really cool. Scientists see the Juan de Fuca plate's demise as a window back in time. It's like getting to witness how our Earth looked millions of years ago. And that's just plain awesome. This tectonic time capsule is giving scientists an incredible opportunity to study how plates form, grow, and eventually meet their demise thigh. But don't worry, Juan de Fuca's got some serious time left, we're talking millions of years. As researchers dig into the plate's story, they're not just learning about its past, they're actually gaining valuable insights that can help us tackle pressing problems in our own neck of the woods. For example, what happens when a region is sitting on a plate that's slowly shutting down? The data shows us one major risky magma starts to seep through the cracks, and we all know how explosive those situations can get. Here's the deal. This plate's hot mask is causing some serious chaos under the surface. Think volcanoes erupting on high lava plains and earthquakes shaking things up left and right. And buckle up, because in just 50 years, things could get a whole lot worse. That crack in the slab might just explode into a massive fault line. The Oregon Seismic Safety Advisory Commission is warning us about an earthquake of epic proportions, think magnitude 8 to 9, with houses crumbling around people, and everything inside turning into rubble. The fallout? Electric grids go down, gas lines burst, and get this, it's not just an earthquake, but also a volcanic eruption that could set the streets ablaze while ash clouds block out the sun. The aftermath? Imagine a catastrophic scenario where fires engulf everything in their path, water supplies get cut off as mains are destroyed, and dams burst wide open, unleashing chaos downstream, not to mention hazardous material spills that would make the situation even more deadly. But wait, it gets worse a tsunami is also on the cards, triggered by the massive plate shift under the ocean. 
a colossal amount of water will be displaced, sending a towering wave our way with its peak blotting out the sun. And when it crashes onto land, all that'll be left are ruins as far as the eye can see. The devastating outcome. Millions would be left in its destructive path, and sadly, many lives lost. Just recall the 2004 disaster that hit Asia so hard. More recently, scientists tell us that a massive shift occurred beneath Burma, when, in an instant, about 1,200 kilometers of rock moved 15 meters, whereas normally the Indian plate drifts by just 6.5 centimeters annually. This seismic jolt registered an earth-shattering 9.3 magnitude on the Richter scale, and we can only imagine the devastation caused by such a powerful quake. Imagine a disaster of such epic scale that it ravaged 18 countries along the Indian Ocean's shores. The deadly tsunami spawned by this cataclysm left an unimaginable toll. At least 300,000 lives lost and over a million people displaced from their homes overnight. Let this be our wake-up call to prepare for the unexpected. While those living on North America's west coast shouldn't sound alarms or hastily abandon ship just yet, now is indeed the perfect time to think ahead and ensure safety nets are in place for when disaster might strike. As we stand at the edge of a new era, it's crucial to acknowledge that the risks remain very much alive on the west coast of North America. The ticking time bomb is not just one, but two tsunamis and earthquakes. To mitigate these threats, our warning systems need an overhaul. Let's talk about the Pacific Tsunami Warning System, a network spanning Hawaii and the U.S. West Coast, designed to sound the alarm at the first sign of danger. But can it be better? The answer is yes. We should also invest more in earthquake prediction technology. The United States, through sites in California, and China are already pushing boundaries with short-term forecast training centers. Despite these efforts, we've yet to crack the code on reliable predictions. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep trying. By cracking the code on early warnings for these natural disasters, we're not just talking about saving lives, we're talking about avoiding total chaos. Imagine being able to prepare, evacuate, or take cover before the worst hits. It's a game changer. So, don't forget to stay ahead of the curve by subscribing.